today we're doing something a little bit different. We're here with a new friend of mine, Jeff, and he's going to tell us about a project. Now I was out in this area, I'm not going to tell you where because I don't want everyone out here sticky beaking, but I was out in this area doing some work this weekend and I made a little discovery that's very interesting we'll see shortly. You might have already seen it in the thumbnail, but this man built it and there could be some future to it as well. Jeff, how are you today? Yeah, good thanks. Thanks for your time and thanks for being able to allow us to do this and I just hope that everyone can get something out of it. You're going to uh, divulge some of the little secrets behind this project of yours and tell us all about it and what's been going on and why. And hopefully we can discover some of those, maybe we can build one ourselves, what do you reckon? Let's have a look and we'll come back to Jeff right now with all the answers. Okay, so Jeff, what have you done? So, created a solar um, power station that tracks the sun. That's its unique bit about it. All right, that kind of gives us our viewers a bit of an idea of what's been going on in your backyard, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Uh, the the big question I have to ask though is uh, why would you do such a thing? Because when you see that monstrosity of um, technology <laughs> sitting out there baking in the hot sun every day, you mm. have to say why would someone do that? So tell us a bit of it. Give us an insight into that. There's probably a couple of things like. Um I come from a trade background, so I'm always interested in building and manufacturing things. Um, also come from um, a power industry myself, so interested in electricity and uh, saw the opportunity to uh, create something that could produce an income. So yeah, a combination of those things and the challenge of actually doing it. I hadn't sort of seen anyone do it in a backyard on a very low scale, like a low financial scale. It's all pretty basic stuff. Okay, um, so when did you have this idea? Yeah, so approximately 2010, early 2010, I had the idea of, of uh, that I could build something, I actually sketched something on the back of a beer coast at the local RSL and showed a mate. And As think, you do. This is what I'm thinking of doing and I created some um, spreadsheets to calculate possible um, generation rates by tracking the sun. And there was a lot of unknowns in those days. There wasn't a lot of information out there on the internet, so a lot of it I had to just sort of use the knowledge I had. Yeah, we are going back eight years now, aren't we? So yeah, sure. And you started building in... So not long after that. Yeah, 2000, probably March 2010, started on stage one. Um, and it was, yeah, just using common everyday stuff that you can buy from a local uh, steel supplier and um, yeah, just, simple bearings and yeah okay and the system was then completed in yeah so August 2010 um, completed stage one so that was 10 kilowatt system uh, 56 panels okay and that was um, linked to the the grid producing power and uh, exporting power so the whole process took about five months to build and get online yeah, it seemed a lot longer than that because I spent a lot of extra time over there, like my spare time, in the shed building this thing and a lot of it I had to design as I went along as I got the challenges of how it overcome. I then had to engineer the um, answer with a limited budget on how to overcome that. So there were quite a few challenges that, yeah, got pretty good simple engineering solutions for. Okay, so um, you did mention it, but how many panels in stage one were there? So there's 56 um, 190 watt panels. 190 watt panels, okay. And would you consider that now to be the older technology? Yeah, so that at that stage, they were sort of the bigger panels that were around then. So they were the common panels that everyone was using. Right, um, okay. And then um, there came a second stage. What happened there? Yeah, so the original concept was to build three uh, arrays, tracking arrays. But um, once I built the initial one and got used to the size of it, I was quite comfortable that I could extend that and it, financially it wasn't such a big a step because I used all the original foundation, all the original controls, all the original motors. So I pulled the most, uh, the upper part of the array down and I added an extra 28 panels to it, which made it a 15 kilowatt system. Okay. 
and why did you do that? Um, just the efficiency of the whole system going bigger was more efficient and yeah this way I could get away with just building two arrays rather than three. And there was a third stage then wasn't there? Yeah so stage three um, come later so it was purpose built 15 kilowatt system and it has uh, 56 uh, 250 watt panels and yeah it also incorporates an underground uh, water tank as its foundation which I capture the harvest the water off the panels and store in the tank and the purpose for that is cleaning the panels and also cooling the panels. Um, I've heard I think that cooling the panels well hot panels aren't efficient so yeah, cooling so, the panels so for every degree over 25 degrees surface temperature you you lose a half a percent efficiency of the panel so the surface temperature can get quite hot sort of 50 50 degrees plus so you're losing 25 percent efficiency what about the dirt accumulating on them how does that yeah affect that the does affect dirt and um, bird yeah. droppings so yeah cleaning the panels is a bit of a chore that needs to be done probably more frequent than what I actually do it because it doesn't rain enough to be self-cleaning but yeah so um, we've written down some numbers here as well. Generation capacity for stage one had 56 panels and was 10 kilowatts. Yes, that's correct. And then we had stage two, which was the expansion of stage one. Yeah, so that made add an extra five kilowatts of panel, so that made it 15 kilowatts. And there was 84 panels, is that right? Yes. Yeah. And then we went to stage three with a whole new array. Yeah. And there's three inverters on that, isn't there, as we'll yeah. see in the video. Um, 30 kilowatts, 169 panels in total now. Yes. Okay, so that's, um, who's got that many panels on their roofs at home, hey? Um, okay, and at, and to get the best efficiency you've got at tracking the sun? Yeah, so my original calculations were that by tracking it would increase um, its export capacity by 30%, and which is pretty much true. So I start generating, as soon as the sun comes up by an hour or two after sunrise, it's generating pretty close to like 80% capacity, whereas most arrays produce that only in the peak of the day. Right, okay, and how does it track the sun at the moment? So at the moment, it is all manually programmed. I have four different programs for the four different seasons of the year, and so I'll manually go in and, and manually um, punch in the program, so yeah. It's, um, it's just four times a year I've got to go and program it. So it just does it on an automatic timing system? It's automatic timers and, um, and limit switches. It's got a lot of safeguards in it. Most um, drives have two protections on them from going over limits or if a gust of wind comes, something unknown. I've been through one cyclone already and it survives. So. <laughs> okay. Um, I was hearing something today too about the panels from someone else, another source that you, you didn't know I was going to ask you this, that um, that on a cloudy day you might put the panels flat? Yeah. Why is that? Um, main thing is the biggest risk I have is storm weather. So if wind gust catches, it's quite a big sail. Like it sits about eight metres in the air and it's about 14 metres wide. So it's a big surface area to catch the wind. So my main concern is get it down flat because once you got flat, there's no danger of wind catching it. So that's the number one priority. Um, if it's cloudy, you're not seeing the sun, and you actually you actually pick up more generation for not pointing at the sun on a cloudy day. There's more reflected light off clouds, so it's it's only minor, so it's not even worth tracking on a cloudy day. Okay. So there's no sort of automatic system that will say put the panels flat because it's cloudy today? Unfortunately there's not. Will there be in the future? Yes there is. Okay, what is the future then? So the future is I looked around for a PLC, a programmable logic controller to, um, to drive the system but with my small budget it's not really affordable and especially with the software. So I found there was a um, mum and dad um, PLCs that you get called Arduini which has freeware that you can program so probably not designed really for this more designed for uh, in-home automation and 
basic stuff like that. So I've um, started on that. I've written probably 80% of the program, but then I've got busy doing other things and haven't got back to writing the program. Mm -hmm. So basically, once I have that control, I'll be able to control it from my mobile phone. Also, be able to have inputs in from the weather or other um, warning devices to put it in a safe position if I'm not around to do so. Uh, do you think you may be developing something here that might be not done so much before? or uh, It's probably been done before on a larger financial scale with um, industrial type stuff. So all this is just basic stuff that you can get from a hardware shop or yeah, buy pretty cheaply and pretty readily available. It's a, it's a low budget thing but it suits its purpose and it was a challenge and I enjoy it. Is there anything else you want to add? Because I'm out of questions. No, it's just, All right. if you plan on doing something, just give it a go and yeah, you never know. It was a, it was a fair unknown when I started it, but it was sort of met all my expectations. Very good. Yeah. So, Jeff and I are just talking about building a panel in my house because apparently it's good tax deduction. <laughs> anyway, no, that's on a serious note. Thanks, Jeff. I really appreciate what you've done this evening and it's been really great hearing all that. Details. I'm sure there's plenty more you're not telling us, mm. <laughs> but uh, maybe another time I'll get it out of them one day. If you push me hard enough, I guess we need a thousand likes for this video before I'll be able to interrogate Jeff any further. Maybe one day we will. Anyway, I hope to keep up in touch with you and uh, talk soon, Jeff, and hopefully we can uh, see where things go from here. Okay. Just don't blow up the township here. I'm not going to say where we are, remember, because uh, we don't want truckloads of tourists turning up. Thanks, Jeff. Thanks, Jeff. All the best, and you gotta go to work in the morning so you better get some sleep. And so must I. See you later.